Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to another tutorial about React. Today we are going to learn about a tool called TenStack Query or React Query. And this tool helps you to manage your server data and your web application. React Query makes the fetching and caching and synchronizing and putting server data in your React application really, really simple and easy. Today, we're going to start from scratch so don't worry if you're completely new to this. So let's dive in. What we'll be covering this course, we'll be covering everything about SenseTag query or React query. We will start from very basics for beginners up to advanced topic. We will cover queries, mutations, validations, infinite scrolling, paginated queries, chain queries, and even we'll go into more advanced combinations where you have to use this 10 stack query with Next.js and server side components. Also, how we can use this uh, library to help us to pass data down to our nested components um, and help with the performance and fetching the APIs from there as well. Also, we look at other combinations when we use the 10 stack query with React hook form, GraphQL, so many, many combinations. So make sure you subscribe, you hit the notification button, so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video for this course. So let's dive in. We'll start with a simple project, of course, the demo is the best way to learn. So in this project, we're just having a list of to-dos, okay? And I'm using a public API from JSON placeholder to give me that list, okay? And all the way we'll be using this list for our demo. And at the moment, I'm using the standard way. I'm just having a state for loading and state for my data. Then I'm using the use effect so I can fetch the data from the API. And then when it's done and completed, I'm setting my state again with the data itself and setting my loading to false. Then in line 16, we're just handling the loading and displaying a loading message. And when that's false, then we have the list for us and then we just display it here. So if I refresh, it, because the API is so quick, you can see that loading, but it is flicking right there, okay? Now, when you use the 10 stack query, we don't have to write all this. We don't need use state, we don't need use effects anymore, okay? It does everything for us, even much more than that. And I'm so happy that I figured out this. I was writing so much code before, it was just a waste of time. Now, let's get started. First thing, we have to install the packages, okay? And the first package is to install the 10 stack query library itself. So if you go to the documentation, just make sure you're on the latest version. So by this time of my recording in uh, May 2024, the latest version is version 5. Okay. So because I'm using React, I need to install 10 stack slash React query. If you're using VET or any other um, JavaScript library, you'll have to install their own packages. So I'll just install this one. And also, while this one installing, I want to install something extra which will help me to link my code and make sure I'm writing my code properly. Um, and there is something called ESLint plugin query, okay? And that is a dev dependency. So I will go and install that as well. And then we have to go to the configuration and add some configuration. So I'll just find my ESLint. So I don't have it here. I'm going to create one. So new folder new file dot ESLint RC and then I will just copy this one here okay also you can add some more configuration if you want so there are some rules you can add as well and these rules looks good for me I'll just add them too so basically we're saying um if there's any uh, package or any function I'm using, which is the pressure, which is old version, show me an error. If there is like a preferred way to write your query object, show me also an error. So you can send them to warning. You can set them to warning if you want to, so it will not block your build later, but you'll be warned in the terminal. But usually I like to be strict in my coding. So anything that I can set to error to stop me from doing mistakes, I'll just set them to the error. It's fine by me. Also, another thing we can do is that you can also enable all recommended rules for, for our plugin, okay, by using extend. So if I do this, I don't have to do the rules. So 
I'll just do extend and I'll remove these rules. So it will enforce basically whatever rules they have to be there. So I'm happy with that one. So that one is done. Our next thing now is to go and clean up our code so we can get started. So I will go to my component. And by the way, I'll upload this project to GitHub and I will have before and after version as well. Okay, let's remove all this. We don't need the state and the use effect. We will not need them anymore. We don't need uh, the use effect and the state as well. We don't need this either for now. And because now we don't have the set, I'll just comment for another list until we use the query and then we we'll and comment it again. So in the next uh, video, we will actually use the query uh, from the basic. So in the next video, we will really start now using the use query and all their hooks. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.